Back in 2018, when I was still a fledgling Tenno, I ran across the Arcop Lastmore. It was recommended to me by a friend. And I was a little bit skeptical because I already had a pretty good shotgun, but as soon as I used it for the first time, I knew I had something special. My friends, it's been 5 years, but the Arcop Lastmore is still an amazing weapon, and today we're gonna be having a full and detailed build guide that is aimed at newer players coming into the game. I'm gonna take you through everything. How to build the weapon, where to get the weapon, why do we build the way that we do, what are your options, where to get the mods, what is the upgrade path for you in Warframe regarding this specific weapon because it also has a tenant version that you can access later down the line at a higher mastery rank. So if you want to learn, you definitely stumbled on the correct place. That said though, in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, I recommend you get a bowl of something, some popcorn, sit back, relax, and reminisce with old Lazar. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Arca Plasma. Let's begin by having a look at how the weapon functions without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Arca Plasmore is a shotgun with a projectile based attack. Now this projectile has an ellipse form and it's gonna be going through every single enemy within its limited range. Now it has infinite body puncher. So essentially I can hit everybody. If I had 100 enemies here, it would go for the full 100. Again, depending on the range and the range of the actual projectile, how far it travels will depend on a stat called projectile flight speed. Yes, by default you have more than plenty range to clear out scores upon scores of corridors of enemies. Now that said, the handling of the weapon as in the usability is a bit on the clunky side, you will pay for that infinite body punch route and you will pay for that fantastic projectile that can hit so many enemies. Essentially the fire rate is not fantastic by default and the reload, cool as it may be, is a tad on the clunky side and again long time by default. The projectile also has certain issues let's say. As you can see, if it catches the side of the wall, it's gonna be detonating and it looks like, oh, it's generating an explosion. By all intents and purposes, it keeps on going and it doesn't really generate an explosion per se. It just looks like it does. Yes, this is a visual effect that doesn't really do any damage to anybody. So bear that one in mind. Now, if the center of the actual projectile catches a surface, it will stop. But if it's just the side, it'll... Let me see if I can keep on going and damage your targets. The ammunition on this one isn't a big deal, but if you tend to be overly spammy with it, you might run out of ammo, in which case an ammo pad is something that you can drop, or you can simply mod for ammo regeneration, or better said, in Warframe, we have the following, ammo conversion. Allow me to show you really quick. We have the following mods for mostly all categories of weapons. Ammo mutation. In our case, shotgun ammo mutation because the Arcaplasmore is classified as being a shotgun. Convert secondary ammo pickups to 50% of ammo pickup. And I'm aware it reads a little bit silly, but the point is the secondary ammo you would pick up will be converted half of it to the ammo that you're using for your Arca Plasmore. In the case of this weapon, specifically, you don't really need a mod such as this. I just thought it would be a good thing to know in case you want to get a bit more spammy with the weapon. Now, where do you get the Arca Plasmore? Here's the bad news or good news. You're gonna need a clan that has researched the Arca Plasmore. It's no big deal. The research cost is very low and most clans already have it researched since this is or was a very, very popular weapon. After you have joined the clan, you can access it really quickly by tapping escape, communication, clan, and you can simply touch enter dojo. After you're in the dojo, you can walk to the energy lab, that is the corpus lab, because this is a corpus weapon, or you can do the following, which is a whole lot quicker, if the loading screen would finally bloody stop, escape, fast travel, energy lab because you see a whole lot of dojos get very very intricate yes for example they have super cool designs like the lgv one that's valkyr prime and there are labs scattered out throughout the entire place so it's faster simply to access fast travel and go to the energy lab now the cost of the blueprint isn't really all that big scroll down to the arca plasmore and replicate your blueprint it's only gonna cost you 15 thousand credits and if you hover over it you will see the resources that will be required in order to craft this weapon 
Credit? No problem. Field drawn? What the hell is that? In order to get field drawn, you gotta do invasions. And Forma, well, my friends, you're gonna be formaing a lot in Warframe. So I suggest you go and crack some relics and make sure you pick up a Forma blueprint every time you don't have something better to pick up. And since we're on the subject of Forma, my weapon has been formatted a grand total of five times. You see the little five stars over here. In the past, Warframe had like star, 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 and you could have people formatting a hundred times and you would have a hundred stars. Nowadays, we just got the little number there. You go into actions after you have fully leveled your weapon to 30 and you hit polarization. After which you will have to select a slot, be it vacant or not, and a polarity to forma. After you click apply, your weapon will be set back to zero and you will have to re-level it to 30 again, reforma, and so on and so forth. Now I know this might seem like a tall task, especially because I have 5 forma, but for the weapon build I'm recommending you, to the free forma is more than enough. We're gonna try to keep it as low as possible. And don't worry about it, my friends. I know it may seem like an insurmountable task to actually level the weapon five times, but the bigger you get in Warframe, the faster it will go. You can fully level a weapon in just a couple of minutes later on. As for the polarities you should select for your weapon, my friends, this is very easy. You don't need to ask anybody about this. Look at the mods you're gonna be using and simply mod or better said Forma, for the polarity of the highest drain mod. Look at my mods over here. This one has drain 14, 12, 11, 10, 14, 15, and so on and so forth. For example, this Riven mod, which is a very special mod for weapons, individual to the weapon, has a drain of 18. That is the highest drain in Warframe. As you can see, it has a polarity of a little V symbol. If you hover over the V symbol over here in the mods, you will see that it's called Madurai. So in my case, I would go to Actions, Polarize, select the slot I wanted, and select the Madurai polarity, and so on and so forth. When it comes to the actual modding of the weapon, you gotta bear in mind what are the stats of the weapon to bring out the most out of it. Let's take a look. Accuracy 9.1, as we discussed and you saw, this is a pretty big projectile and it has no headshot multiplier. In Warframe, going for headshots, especially on critically inclined weapons, is extremely important because of the bonus multipliers. Now, this is a whole separate conversation, which I will not go into today, but if you want to see the full and detailed guide on critical chance, critical multipliers, why do we go for headshot? Why do we mod over 100% crit chance? Look at the cards right now so I don't make this a three hour long vid. Ammo maximum, ammo pickup, fall off between 10 and 20. What the hell is fall off? You see, you get your maximum damage up until 10 meters, that's it. From 10 to 20, you're gonna be losing a whole lot of your damage. This is where projectile flight speed comes into play. Projectile flight speed with fatal acceleration. Take a look at this one, 40%. So my projectile travels faster and it's gonna reach longer. 14 to 28, so I get full damage up until 14 meters and the drop off until 28. So the maximum range in this case is gonna go all the way to 28, but I'm losing damage at 14. Moral of the story, don't use this one further than 10 meters away. Or if you do, be aware you are gonna be losing a good chunk of your damage. Fire rate of 1.1, as you saw, it's pretty sluggish. Magazine of 10, noise alarming because, well, it is alarming. Once upon a time in Warframe, this whole noise thing used to carry a whole lot of weight. Nowadays, it's not really all that relevant anymore, sadly. Reload 2.8 seconds, again on the lengthy side and the Riven disposition of 3 out of 5. Earlier, I showed you this mod right here. This is unique to the Arca Plasmore. You can get one Sort of like this, getting an identical one is very difficult because these are <sighs> RNG based. Yes, my friends, the random number generator. You will get these from sorties, most likely, and you will roll them with Kuva. You see mine at the bottom right corner of the Riven mod, 50. That means I rolled it 50 times, which was enough to drive me insane. When it comes to Riven mods, this is a point of great discussion and discontent within the community. A whole lot of players are simply not happy with this system because it is essentially a slot machine. While it may not take real money per se, you can argue that you spend real money to get the booster, to get more Kuva, to roll more. It's an argument to be had, we're not going to be going into that today, that's a topic for another time, just be aware of Riven mods in Warframe. Now that disposition that you see here, 3 out of 5, what the hell does that mean? The more balls your weapon has, 
the more powerful these Riven mods. So for example, if my Riven disposition was 5, then my critical chance right there on the Riven would not be 82.2, it would be something like 120. For example, you get it? You get bigger stats. Not necessarily the right stats, that comes down to RNG, just simply bigger or smaller depending on how many balls you have. The Riven disposition is controlled manually by Digital Extremes and they say it's about popularity. The more popular a weapon is, the less balls it has to give a fighting chance to other weapons and vice versa, the less popular a weapon is, the more balls it will have, the greater disposition, therefore the more powerful Rivens. Also keep in mind that a lot of people trade these for extremely high amounts of real currency that is going to be platinum in Warframe because they are valuable to collectors and if you want to get the most you can out of many weapons, you will have to get a right rolled Riven, which can be very expensive. Again, I'm not saying using it, I'm saying be aware of this system in Warframe. Trigger semi-automatic, so you gotta click, 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 or you can bind your fire to your scroll wheel and scroll to your heart's content. Critical chance on a 22%, critical multiplier on a 1.6, status 28%, and default damage by default is gonna be radiation. As you can see, if I hover over radiation, it is the elemental combination between heat and electricity. Yes, that's how you form radiation. Right now in Warframe, it does extra damage to alloy armor. It's not one of the most useful effects, but we'll talk more about that later. Critical chance and critical multiplier, the two must be in sync in order to get the most out of weapon, but there are effects, outside effects or outside buffs that can manipulate these multipliers. I'm talking about your Warframe's powers, arcanes, and so on and so forth. Don't worry about it for now. Just focus on the base stats and try to understand them. Critical chance, you know what that is. Critical multiplier, I assume you know what that is. If you get a crit, that's the damage amplification, the multiplier it will apply. More importantly in Warframe, when it comes to primary weapons, you have the following mod. It's called Hunter Munition. It is, without a single doubt, the most overpowered mod you can have on any primary that crits. And it has been so for the past four or five years in Warframe. Take a look at this very simple, easy to obtain and cheap mod that everybody and their mamas have like 20 of them. Plus 30% chance to apply slash on critical. The second part, don't worry about it, okay? The set bonus is not important in this case, just the initial part. My friend, slash in Warframe is still the most powerful damage over time effect and the beauty about Hunter Munitions is that it bypasses the whole status chance of the weapon. It doesn't care about this, the only thing it cares about, get a crit, on that crit, 30% chance to apply Slash. So bear that one in mind. Now Slash in Warframe goes fantastic with Viral. If you search Viral in the search bar, you will see the mods that in combination will make Viral damage. You don't have mods that simply apply Viral. No, Viral is a combination between Toxin damage and Cold damage. And the most often seen combination of mods is Toxic Barrage together with Frigid Blast. 60-60 mods because they offer you 60 of something, an element and 60% status chance. There are four of them per weapon in Warframe, per weapon category in Warframe. Except our guns. No, wait, our guns too. Never mind. You, you, our guns are heavy weapons. We'll talk about them some other time. This one, Toxin status chance. This one, Cold status chance. Toxic Barrage and Frigid Blast are two mods that you will need to farm. You do need them in your lineup. The good news is they're pretty easy to farm, or if you can't be arsed to farm, they're pretty cheap to buy from the trade chat. I'm talking about 5 to 10 plat, something of the sort. Or maybe you can trade for them like I used to do when I was mastery rank 6 or 7. Toxic Barrage obtained from Corrupted Vor in the Void. Frigid Blast by doing spy missions. You see, these two in combination on my weapon form Vital Damage. And the effect, Vital Status effect increases damage to health up to 325% with multiple stacks for a short duration. Up to 10 stacks, my friends. Vital on the target, get the Slash on. The Slash will be doing so much more damage. So Slash plus Vital in Warframe equals extremely powerful. Bear that one in mind. Now that we know that, there are two ways to build the weapon. Of course, there are a million ways to put random mods on stuff. That's not important. What is important, you can build for raw strength, raw damage, or you can play the status game like I mentioned earlier. I will show you both. Since we just talked about Hunter Munitions, this is the kind of build you're looking for. Flat damage in Warframe up until enemies in the levels 200. 
300 and something of the sort depending on the enemy and the defenses that it has it's still the best thing you can go for outside of multi-shot multi-shot is king on everything all the time with the exception of one weapon not important what is important multi-shot on everything as much as you can bloody get Health Chamber 120%, Vigilante Armaments 60%. You will note that all of these mods are easy to obtain, not only easy to obtain, but also they are extremely cheap when it comes to the endo upgrade cost. 5 balls maximum. Prioritize multi shot and critical chance. Critical chance from laser sight. Now, this recommending this to a new player is a bit on the iffy side. Allow me to explain why that is. It's an on headshot effect. So, this mod gives you nothing until you get a headshot and normally with the arca plasma you don't aim for headshots because as we discussed earlier you don't have a headshot multiplier on it but you will still be going for headshots to activate that 120 percent critical chance and when aiming that is when you go to your right click yes i don't know what you press on controller but this is aiming mode yes so this is aiming mode you go for a headshot you get the headshot and you can track your buff in the upper right portion of the screen small little icon that you will not be able to understand and it has been so for years thank you so much de slash rant the Hunter Munitions we talked about earlier and we also made Viral on the weapon, but this time I replaced the 6060 Cold Mod with Chilling Reload. Now if I remember correctly, and I hope that I do, in order to get Chilling Reload you need to do Nightmare Missions in the Star Chart. Nightmare in name only. They're not that difficult, please don't be put off by their name, they are not nightmarish at all again you can simply trade for it you see i dropped some status chance for reload speed because the reload of the weapon it's simply doggone awful at 2.8 seconds and in actual gameplay it will bother you a whole lot or at least it bothers me a whole lot so i chose to fix one of the usability issues of the weapon while still getting the vital elemental combo on the weapon ravage is critical damage as explained before you do have one better option than that it's called shrapnel shot i will choose not to use it in this demonstration this is critical damage when aiming again for nine seconds and it's on kill so you gotta be consistently getting kills and if i remember me when i was a new player i would kill some stuff stop look around gaze at the bushes and see if i can pick up the thing and i couldn't interact with it i'm i'm blabbering never mind me Point is, Shrapnel Shop over Ravage when you get consistent kills all the time. And if you're not happy with the aim effects, yes, or with the on-kill effects, you can go for Blunderbuss instead of Laser Sight. You only get 90%, but it's constant. Now, what can I be testing out the weapon? Keep in mind that in Warframe, when you see a guide or something, there are a million and one ways to amplify weapon damage and make it seem more powerful than it actually is. For example, this puppy right here, corrosive projection reduces the enemy's armor. Less armor, less EHP, more damage, simple as. So in this case, what we're gonna be doing is going for an empty build so it doesn't actually skew the test results. Void schools can do that as well. If you're mastery rank 10, I don't wanna talk to you about void schools because that would be a spoiler, so shush, 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 shush. And companions as well but in this case it's just going to be the weapon versus the enemies if you're around mastery rank 10 i would wager you're gonna see what are you gonna see enemies in the levels what 20 30 40 maybe 50 60 something of the sort so we're gonna be spawning level 50s crewman for the corpus faction ancient crew uh healer for the infested faction and corrupted heavy gunner one of the toughest targets in warframe for the grenier faction these have a whole lot of vhp we're going to be simulating them and we're going to be testing out the weapon to see its capabilities you will see that when it comes to the corpus faction yes the ones that have big shield the weapon i mean do i even need to say anything more than that ancient healers a bit more tough eh? a bit more tough but speaking about tough, let's talk about Corrupted Heavy Goons. You see, their health bar is orange or yellow, depending on how you set up your monitor. That means they have armor and a whole lot of it. We're going for headshot to keep up our buff. Look at the buff, 120% upper right portion of the screen. Now, as you hit your enemies, you will see all sorts of effects on top of them. Those are the status effects we talked about. We deal viral, we deal impact damage, and we also deal... Um, slash damage. That's what killed the Corrupted Heavy Goon that was behind the initial one. And yes, they have sometimes those cool effects. Now let me show you how Slash actually works. I hit this guy, I got two slashes, one vital. Take a look at that. That was a one-shot. 
When I got the proc and that 4000 bleed essentially destroyed it. When you don't get the proc, it's not as good. For example, this time I got a proc 2300. Why not 4000? A single slash proc instead of two. Because I have multi shot on my weapon. That means I'm firing multiple projectiles right now because of the multi shot. It may not seem like I'm firing multiple projectiles because they essentially overlap. Keep in mind that in Warframe, they never perfectly overlap. They will hit the target at slightly different variations in time, which is why sometimes you get status effects before others. This is a pretty advanced discussion where I'm gonna table it for another vid, but the point is, even if they look like they're perfectly overlapping, they are not, and they are hitting the targets at different times. You saw an orange strike on my target. That orange strike represents level 2 crits. Okay, and again, more details on this on the guy that we already talked about. Critical chance, critical multipliers, how do they apply in Warframe? The reason that was orange and not yellow is Vigilante Armaments and the bonus effect that it has. 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. So essentially, first you need the crit, and on that crit, you got that 20% chance to go from yellow to orange. And the next step up is red and so on and so forth. Now, in order to help you visualize how does multi-shot actually work, we're going to be using the following mod. It's called Vicious Spread. Offers you 90% damage, but with 60% spread. Normally, that spread is not really a big deal on certain weapons, but it also means less accuracy. I'm going to use it instead of point blank. Again, the same amount of damage, but my accuracy goes down from 9.1 to 2.1. Minus 60% doesn't mean that if we would take it like that, but the way they calculate accuracy is really weird, so forget about it, forget about it. We're not going to be discussing that today. Same targets as before, and I want you to see the projectiles of this weapon. You see that? Multiple projectiles going in different directions. This is an easy way for me to showcase the fact that you have multi-shot on it, and this is how they don't overlap as well as before because of the difference in accuracy. Essentially, the accuracy seems to be calculated individual. So you see, sometimes you get like a semi-curtain of uh, projectiles covering mostly half the screen. Take a look at that. Beautiful. As for the performance of the weapon, my friends, up until level M up until MR16 or something of the sort, or if you're doing levels in the hundreds, this is more than plenty to absolutely annihilate whatever stands before you. But there's one more way to build the weapon. This was the critical chance viral munitions approach. You can go about it raw damage. In this case, I substituted the critical chance and critical damage mod since the critical chance and critical damage by default on the weapon are not so hot for more raw damage. I'm talking about 90 elemental mods. Toxin together with electricity, which will be forming corrosive. Corrosive damage deals extra damage to ferrite armor. Ferrite armor is what it's protecting those corrupted heavy goons. They are equipped with ferrite armor. This is one of the reasons they're taking a whole lot less damage. In Warframe, you have plenty of effects that can reduce or outright remove armor, but corrosive will be doing extra damage to it. Bear in mind, if you remove all the armor, then corrosive doesn't do extra damage to it because you are hitting a different surface. You are hitting clone flesh, and for clone flesh, ideally you would hit it with viral damage. As before, I'm using 60-60 mods, Toxic Barrage, but this time I went for the electricity one, Shell Shock. The problem with this mod, while it is obtainable from the game by farming, the mission is called Nyglar on the planet Eris, you gotta find all the free secret caches, then upon extraction, you got a 5% chance at this one, or the rifle version. The chance to drop is not fantastic, actually doing the mission and finding all the caches, especially when you're a newer player, is a bit of a pain in the arse. Thankfully, Barokitir, the Void Trader of Warframe that shows up every two weeks, sometimes brings this mod. If you see it, grab it. If you want to see all the battle updates as soon as they happen, make sure to subscribe. Now let's test out the build and compare it to the uh, critical chance viral munitions one that we tried earlier on the exact same targets as before. You don't need to go for headshots anymore. As you can see, the actual raw damage. Oh, look at that, 15.4 thousand. That was a crit amplified by Vigilante Armaments doing radiation damage. The raw damage itself is greater. Much greater than in the Hunter Munitions mod, but you're not getting that slash, you're not getting that viral, 
So if you want more raw damage, if you're the kind of player that prefers, hey, one big bada boom to make them go away, this is the way to go. Now, the reason why they go up into the air and get vaporized like that is because of the radiation effect. Half because of the radiation effect, and the other half, there is a bug in the sea, that. But it's funny. It's funny. In actual missions, they shouldn't blast off like that. But hey, there you go. Now my friends, this concludes the new player portion of the guide. This is how you build a weapon, this is a tremendous weapon, a very popular weapon in Warframe that is ideal if you're around mastery rank 10. It's not the only one, if you want to see a top on the best new player friendly weapons in the game, click the cards right now. Now if you love the weapon, like I love the weapon, on Mastery Rank 16, 1, 6, you are going to be able to do the Sisters of Parvos, and the Sisters of Parvos with a little bit of convincing, will give you the upgraded version of this weapon, the Tenet Arca Plasmor. And my friends, this is a different kettle of fish altogether. It's got better stats across the board, and in this one, it is worth investing. One last thing that I would like to point out, and I'll be honest, I forgot to point out at the appropriate time, you will have a primary arcane slot. Now normally you shouldn't even see this if you haven't progressed enough in Warframe. Do not unlock this on the Arcaplasmor. It is not worth uh, wasting a primary arcane adapter when you have the tenant version. And you should not unlock this slot either. This is the Excellus slot. This Excellus slot can carry a whole lot of power on the right weapon and not so much on others. The point is for the Arcaplasmor to maximum free format, that's all we are investing in. You might say, but also I'm investing in the mods because I'm going to farm them and I'm going to upgrade them with endo that I don't have a lot of, but you will be using these mods on a whole lot of builds. So bear that one in mind. For the Excellus slot, in case you want to unlock it, you're going to be going with Fatal Acceleration for the reasons we already outlined. You get faster traveling projectiles and you also get that better fall off. It's an option. If you're having ammo issues, you can go with something like shotgun ammo mutation and so on and so forth. Again, this slot right here doesn't mean a whole lot of power on most weapons. In the case of the Arca Plasmor and the Tenant, it does offer a pretty significant advantage. As for the Tenant, this is simply straight up better and you should definitely invest into this one. I'm going to be spawning in much higher level targets. I'm going to be spawning in as high as I can. The same targets as before. We're going to go high 165 and I'm going to show you what the Tenant Arca Plasmor can do by comparison on much higher level targets. Fully wound up, I got all of the buffs, passive, take a look at this. Absolutely bloody phenomenal, the Tenant Arca Plasmor can handle most content in Warframe without any issue whatsoever. You saw that crit, it was 100,000 yellow, compare that to the 15,000 orange that you had earlier from the regular version. Now I am using all the mods on this one, I am using a maximum build Tenant Arca Plasmor. Now if you want more details on the Tenant Arca Plasmor, how to build it, how to max it out, what mods will you need and so on and so forth. If you're high enough in Mastery Rank, I'm talking about 16 and over, link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on the Tenant version, a truly outstanding weapon. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. I hope this was useful to you. If you got any questions, paste them down in the comment section down below. Now, I may not be able to get to all of them, but there are plenty of fantastic users in this community that will love to help you. Consider joining on Discord. And as always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can also catch me on Twitch. Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's gonna be a link in the upper portion of the screen in the cards right about now. I'm not gonna go just yet, however. You know, in Warframe, you can do even better than that. You can use something called Warframe buffs. When you use Warframes to amplify your damage, the sky's the limit. You can go to what is effectively called level cap, that is enemies 9999. Now most players don't do this because essentially is it's not something fantastically practical, nor is there any great reward or anything of the sort, but if you want to test your metal, that is definitely an option you can go for. And when it comes to weapon buffs, there's nobody better, my friends, than Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding buffs. 
When it comes to companion buffs, you have an option of two. You can use the Panzer Volpofeila, which is what I usually recommend. She is immortal and she's gonna be applying that very important viral buffs to your enemies. So if she does the viral, that means you are free on your weapon to mod for whatever else you want. I don't need to mod for viral anymore because the Panzer Volpofeila will do it for me. Bear in mind, however, the Panzer Volpofeila's reliability isn't all that hot. And, and the second option is to go for a sentinel. Any sentinel you want, it doesn't really matter all that much, just make sure that on your little sentinel's weapon you have the four vigilante mods. Remember we talked about that set bonus earlier? You're gonna get yourself the 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons, from armaments, offense, supplies and fervor. If you're gonna be using armaments on your weapon, no need to use it here. Even if your little sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will retain this buff. So the option, as always, is yours. For lower level content, up until level 200, you can use the extra crit. For over that, go with the Panzer Volpophila. As for Mirage, this is a build you can go for corrosive projection like we discussed before. It's going to be lowering the armor of the enemies, making them a bit more easier to kill, reducing their effective HP. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful in Warframe. For the aura that you have, simply go for the aura of your choosing. Most new players in Warframe get a kick out of the following. It's called Energy Siphon, because let's be honest, you are having some energy issues, aren't you? Energy pads are a solution, but they're a bit expensive for new players, so I would go with Energy Siphon. This helps a bit, it doesn't really help a lot. Moral of the story, my friends, go for the aura that your build calls for. We're not going to discuss Warframe builds today, some other day. Arcanes, you should really invest into when you are capable of. Arcane Avenger R5. Where do we get Arcanes? From Eidolon hunting and not only. Some of them are obtained from vendors for various tokens in Warframe that you need to do specific content. Don't worry your head too much about them right now. Just simply know that if you're not into Eidolon hunting like most players aren't, because by this point it's been done to death, you can simply buy them from the trade chat. Yes, you can trade for them. This one will offer you 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. My friends, this is a bonus additive after. A bonus additive after effect does not care about the base critical chance of your weapons. It simply gives you 45%. The weapon can have zero. Boom, 45%. And you know what? It offers it to your primary secondary and to your melee weapon at the exact same time. The catch? It's undamaged. So bear that one in mind. Arcane Rage is not really needed here because we got more than plenty flat damage, but more is more at the end of the day, even though it's not going to provide a huge benefit. 180% damage to primary weapons for a whopping 24 seconds. It's an on headshot effect. Normally, this arcane should be reserved for your Warframe. At least one arcane for your Warframe. What is very popular right now in Warframe, and you're probably not going to have for a lengthy amount of time is arcane energize this little arcane right here essentially enables a whole lot of warframe builds and at the end of the day we are playing warframe weapons are an integral part of that a key part of that that i'm very passionate about but warframes are still warframes in well warframe we also have one arcane that is dedicated to shotguns which is really cool it's called tempo and i like using this one a lot on critical hit you get some fire rate to shotguns for 12 seconds it's not needed but in this case hey why not have a bit of fun? And we're going to be spawning in the same targets as before, only not. I'm going to be spawning in the toughest targets I have. They're called Exo Gogstad Officer. Now, if you're around Mastery Rank 10, I wager you haven't seen these guys before. But the point is, so much health, so much effective HP. Look at that Ferrite Harbor, 1000. Look at those resistances. The little symbols that you see there with pluses and minuses, do you recognize them? You don't? Those are the symbols of the damage types you do in Warframe. That little arrow going through the circle thing, that is puncture damage. Yeah? You see that? So if it has two pluses next to it, that means 50% more damage from puncture. If it has a minus, that means minus 25%. So A minus or A plus, A symbol is 25%. Three of them, 75%. Two of them, 50%. Pluses and minuses. You get how that one works. So essentially, this is how you know how your target will react to damage. What will it be taking more damage from and what will it be taking less damage from. Now you see that slash over there with a minus on ferrite armor? That doesn't mean that your slash procs are going to be ticking lower. No, that means when you hit it with actual slash damage, it's going to be doing less 25%. But the proc itself of the element is not affected by that. In Warframe, a damage type has two components, the actual damage it does to the target and its specific 
proc that it can apply to a target. For example, impact status proc makes the target go for a second. Or for example, radiation status proc makes the target attack its allies and so on and so forth. It is important to note that the actual status proc of an element has nothing to do with the actual damage it does. Hopefully that made sense because it sounds a little bit confusing. Or at least when I first understood it, it was confusing as all hell. I'm gonna activate Mirage's 4 ability, which is empowered in my case, and her 3rd ability, Eclipse. If you take a look at my buff bar, 840%. That does not mean 140% damage, definitely not. That means Eclipse is 840%, providing a whole lot more damage than just 840%. And of course, her ever so lovely, clones. How beautiful is this? A symphony of GTFO. Absolutely freaking sensational. This is what the Tenant Arca Plasmore can do. The ultimate version of the Plasmore together with some serious Warframe buffs. The damage is absolutely insane. And now my friends, hopefully you know everything you need to about this weapon and not only. You know how to take it from the very beginning all the way to extreme heights and extreme damage. As always, my name has been Lazar, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.